They are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to the ELEX webinar titled Use of Social Media in the Library. I'm Allison Armstrong, a member of the ELEX Continuing Education Committee and will be your host for this afternoon's webinar. Our presenter today is Stacy Seek. She is the Library Communications Manager at Taylor & Francis Group and is responsible for managing the library marketing and communications activities for North and South America. She first joined Taylor & Francis in 2008 as the manager of the Library and Information Science Journal's portfolio. Prior to coming to Taylor & Francis, Stacy worked for Marion Matters, the media, marketing, and merchandising company behind the popular Advanced brand. A few things to keep in mind for today's presentation. Today's webinar does not have an interactive chat capabilities. If you wish to comment on today's presentation using Twitter, you may use the hashtag on the screen. However, we will not be monitoring the Twitter feed. If you have questions for Stacy, please type them into the question box on your screen and she will answer them. I ask that you please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the GoToMeeting interface and locate the questions box. Any questions which remain unanswered while we are on the air will be answered offline and answers will be sent to all attendees. This webinar is being recorded and you will receive an email with links to the recording, the presentation slides, and an evaluation within two days. Please take time to fill out the evaluation form since it will be used by the committee to plan future events. There may be a slight delay as I turn the presentation over to Stacy. Okay, thanks Allison. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. As Allison said, my name is Stacy Seek, and I'm the Library Communications Manager for the Americas at Taylor & Francis. I first wanted to thank you all for joining us today, and thanks to Alex for facilitating and hosting today's webinar. This afternoon, I'll be talking to you about the findings of TNF's latest white paper, which explores the use of social media by the library. So first, I'll talk a little bit about the Taylor & Francis group. Taylor & Francis is one of the world's leading publishers of scholarly journals, books, e-books, and reference works. We publish under a number of different imprints, including Routledge, Taylor & Francis, CRC Press, Psychology Press, and Garland Science. As an international publisher, we have a network of offices across the globe to provide local expertise and support to the library communities. We're very proud of our publishing heritage with the likes of Charles Darwin, Angela Merkel, and Max Planck, among the renowned authors who have published with us. But equally, we are proud to be at the forefront of new technology and to work alongside our partners and to continually innovate and improve working practices. We're dedicated to meeting the needs of the library community in particular, and we seek to work together to navigate the ever-changing landscape of library service provision. So why look at social media in the library? Social media has the potential to facilitate much closer relationships between libraries and their customers. Current usage remains ad hoc and somewhat experimental, but the use of social media tools is accelerating, and they're likely to play an increasingly important role in library service provision. Taylor & Francis has undertaken the research and compilation of a white paper to provide an overview of current practices from which individual institutions can benchmark their own activities and be inspired to try new approaches. And I see that some people are having a problem hearing me. Is that the case for everybody? Okay, well, I'll keep going. If anybody has problems, let me know. Okay, so, okay, good. Looks like some people can. So to start, I'm going to talk a little bit about our methodology. Uh, our research program was international in scope, and it was conducted through a number of channels. The research comprised of focus groups with librarians in the UK, the US, and India. We did 10 telephone interviews with thought leaders from the library community. 
We hosted a Twitter party with participants from the UK, the US, Australia, Canada, and South Africa. We also sent out an online survey which received 497 responses from librarians around the world. And then we did some follow-up desk research to reference other relevant studies. And I'll talk a little bit more about each in just a second. So first, focus groups. We hosted focus groups in the UK, the US, and India. And the UK and US groups were facilitated by librarians. The Indian group was facilitated by TNF staff. And the feedback we had from our focus groups points to similarities between the US and the UK in how and to what extent social media is being used in the library. And our focus groups also showed several differences between these countries and India, whereas in India there's a lot of interest in the potential of social media as a communications tool in the library, but a lot less of actual current practical use. As I said, we performed some in-depth phone interviews, and we used these interviews to gain an understanding about how librarians were really using social media on a day-to-day -day basis, what challenges they found in using it, and then in some cases to find out how they were collaborating with librarians at other universities. And much of the feedback from this part of our research has allowed us to develop some case studies, which I'll talk about as I go on. Um, next, our Twitter party. We hosted a Twitter party on June 5th. And we had 73 registrants from around the world, including from the UK, Australia, Canada, and the US. The Twitter party was an hour-long, lively, and engaging discussion via Twitter. And we used the hashtag TNF Social Media, which elicited 260 mentions. We invited guests to our party via email and Twitter. And then we sent registrants a list of themes that we were going to cover during that hour. And some of those themes included using social media tools in your library, trends of social media in the library community, social media as a teaching tool, the role it can play in uh, information literacy, as well as accessibility. And then we asked about user engagement and perception of the use of social media in the library, as well as measurability and how you look at the impact of social media and the future of social media. And we used the conversation from this Twitter party to create a Storify. And that it was something that we used to share the findings with external people. And that can be viewed online at the URL you see on the screen there. And after just one week of posting it, there were more than 1,100 views as well as several inquiries about how to participate in the research we were doing from several universities in Europe and South Asia in particular. So the next, our survey. I'll talk about who responded to it and uh, what those people looked like. So there were 497 responses to the online survey in total, and by far the majority of the respondents came from the US, followed by the UK, and then India and Australia. This doesn't really give us enough of a representation, a rep representative sample to draw conclusions about the different approaches to social media on a, a per country basis, uh, but as I mentioned, the qualitative feedback we have from the focus groups points to similarities between the US and the UK in how and to what extent social media is being used in the library and then to the differences between how it's being used here and in the UK versus other, other countries, particularly in India, where there's a lot of interest in social media as a tool in the library, but less practical use. We looked at the institution type. We asked respondents to tell us where they were coming from. And the majority of responses came from librarians working in academic libraries, with a small representation from libraries in other sectors, including public and professional, which you'll see on the screen here. Next, we also asked librarians to identify their job title to see if there were conclusions we could draw about you know, how they were using social media depending on the role within the library. And we grouped those different responses into 32 different job titles and into the six categories that you see on the screen. So we, have, we ran an extensive analysis to determine if there was a particular library role that could be kind of associated with certain types of social media activity. But as you can see here, um, and when looking at the published data, there really aren't very many correlations we can make between a given role and an, an individual or a library's approach to social media. So this leads us to believe that rather than you know, having social media being attached to a specific job, uh, a job role or a, a special level, social media is really being picked up by those who maybe have a special interest in it or a talent in it, which is kind of one-off depending on the university. Interestingly enough, this data also shows that there is a growing number of new roles in the library that seem to be dedicated to communications and social media 
In fact, we saw that 10 respondents identified themselves as being a social media manager. There were seven that identified as being an outreach or a communications librarian, and there was one who was listed as the head of marketing for their library. Next, we looked at the audience uh, by size, and the majority of respondents were working in libraries with fewer than 5,000 FTEs, although a sizable majority were using social media to uh, communicate with people in universities of 25,000 or more. And uh, we aim to complete some further analysis of the audience size and the, the university size to determine whether audience and the size of the school may have an influence on how and why social media accounts are being set up and managed. So how are libraries currently using social media? Um, I've just given you an idea of how we collected the research to inform our white paper and our, our research. And now I'm going to take you through some of the key findings. So setting the scene, we looked at current use. And uh, in particular, taking data from the survey, we found a number of statistics that give us a profile of the current use of social media in the library. We found, for one, that more than 70% of librarians feel that the use of social media is important. Most librarians, about 67%, manage between one and four social media accounts at a time, with 23% managing more than five accounts. 30% of respondents said they post to social media on at least a daily basis, and then over 60% have had a social media account for more than three years. We found that Facebook and Twitter are the most popular channels, followed closely by blogs. And then we found that approach, approaches to policy implementation are split when it comes to managing the output of social media channels. We found that 29% of respondents have a social media policy in place, and 28% are planning to implement one. However, we found that 43% of survey respondents had no plans to introduce a policy. And that's perhaps indicative of the early, stage, the early stages libraries are at with experimenting with social media and actually creating a formal, formal plan. Some of the reasons for using social media that were uh, discussed in the survey covered a range of objectives, including seeking the opinion of library users, reaching users in their homes or in virtual spaces, promotional purposes such as publicizing events, services, or new content. Uh, it was also used to connect with specific user groups and to network with other librarians, and then to build a sense of community. We uh, looked at which channels are used the most, and I'd mentioned Facebook and Twitter. And those were really the big ones that were talked about and uh, responded to in our survey. And the Facebook was particularly key for engaging with students based on the, the responses we received. Uh, Twitter was felt to be more effective for communicating with researchers and other institutions. And then blogs are used for sharing information and news. YouTube was also cited by some respondents, and that was cited as being useful for providing instructional information and for collection management. Academia.edu and ResearchGate were also mentioned, but they were, being, they were seen as being of you know, less interest, I guess, because of their lack of connectivity with libraries and publishers, and that's seen as a problem. It's less interactive and more just posting. So in our focus groups and interviews with the librarians and even in the survey, uh, the respondents reported on seeing an accelerated uptake of visual channels such as SlideShare, YouTube, Pinterest, Flickr, and Instagram. And YouTube is being used for educational purposes, with Pinterest being used to showcase new acquisitions, and then Flickr for uh, posting photos of library activities, such as you know, refurbishments and different changes in the library. And part of the rise of the usage of more visual channels seem to be you know, reflecting changes in the way in which people are responding to visual versus verbal messages. Multiple sources report that in social media marketing, visual postings attract higher levels of engagement. And uh, we did some research and found that we're able to process images 600,000 times faster than we can process text. So part of this preference may be reflective you know, of a growing preference uh, for these visual images and visual social media as the volume of information that we're exposed to continues to grow. So in the Taylor and Francis survey, when we asked librarians whether they agreed that visual communication was becoming more important, particularly in social media, 81% of respondents agreed. And with information overload continuing to be a problem, you know, we expect to see a continued move to the greater use of image-based social media, uh, particularly by librarians and you know, in other areas as well. 
So we also asked librarians to rate how important social media is to achieve a certain set of objectives in their library. And uh, we came up with basically the, the top five uses for social media in the library. And the results indicate that it's being primarily used to fulfill marketing and promotional objectives, whether that be the promotion of an event, you know, collections or new services. And then engagement with faculty and students is not far behind in terms of priorities. And you'll see here that 76% of, of respondents put down events promotion as being the, their top priority. And then the promotion of new acquisitions was number five at 61%. At the other end of the spectrum, using social media in a teaching or learning capacity is a much lower priority right now. And the three lowest scoring objectives were using social media as a teaching tool, using it as a tool for promoting courses, and lastly, as a research and discovery tool to find relevant materials. So we do uh, expect that to change, but for right now, that's the information that we're seeing. On this slide, this is a screenshot from one of our accompanying infographics, which summarizes some of the key opportunities and challenges that libraries are seeing when they're, they're using social media. And I'm going to look at this in a bit you know, more detail, and I'll separate the specific opportunities and challenges which were highlighted in the survey. So the most popular opportunity relating to the use of social media was the chance to raise the professional profile of the library with 72% of survey respondents finding that this was an opportunity. Other opportunities cited included the freedom to connect regularly with users and the collaboration with other departments within the organization, which indicates perhaps that social media is seen as a freer you know, alternative communication channel, which can be used in a more informal way to reach some of their key audiences. Some of the advantages and benefits for libraries through using social media are seen to be, for one, the perceived low cost, with uh, little required training of using social media, promotional messages and news disseminated quickly. The promotion of library holdings is, uh, is helping to increase the usage of content, so you can use social media to push out messages directly to students, faculty, and it gets out there really quickly in hopes that they can click through to the content. Also increasing engagement and in interaction with library users. And it's also seen as a channel through which to gain feedback and to enhance the user services that you're offering. And lastly, outreach activities through onward sharing beyond the institution itself. And then next we looked at some of the challenges that social media presents in the library. Uh, the most significant challenge that survey respondents mentioned in the survey was seen to be time and resource, with 67% stating this was a challenging issue. This was followed by judging an appropriate tone for communications, you know, formal versus informal, with 64% citing this as a challenge, and then making sure others were aware of the library's social media activities, with 61% citing that as a challenge. Other challenges which were seen to be a significant issue included, again, that considerable time and commitment required by the library staff, the requirement of technological expertise to use social media, selecting an informal but presentable tone, or delivering social media content in a bilingual or mi multilingual um, languages you know, in different regions. Levels of interest in and skills with using social media vary enormously across library staff, so trying to find people and engage librarians to actually uh, get involved and to be excited about using social media. Limited funds to support the more advanced social media usage and the features, as well as any training that might be required to enable the usage of those. Uh, maintaining engagement with library users and, and attracting popularity, you know, increasing followers, likes, and so on would seem to be a challenge. And then also the difficulty in maintaining library branding for content and resources and making resources accessible via the social media. Uh, potential copyright issues when using social media such as YouTube to build collections. And uh, lastly, external factors such as internet connectivity, technological infrastructure, and you know, in some cases, government restrictions on the use of social media um, and how that would restrict access and the messages you're sending out. And the common themes that reemerged from respondents indicated that they were mainly concerned about the amount of time and the level of skills that needed in order to adequately maintain a social media challenge and to really benefit from a good level of return success. Next, we'll look at some of the, the channels that have been used and that were uh, some of the reasons that people are using social media in the library. So 
So first, customer service. Using social media as a customer service tool was frequently cited across our research, and you can see some example quotes from survey respondents alongside the image here. Uh, a key challenge relating to customer service provision via social media is responding in a timely fashion, as you know, users expect quick answers to their questions, whatever the time, time of day or the day of week uh, it may be. So that, that can certainly be a challenge and something that you need to have a policy on. Institutions in our focus groups reported that declining usage of websites for accessing uh, library service information uh, with some suggesting that these pages were now used primarily by external audiences. However, librarians were still putting effort into maintaining the current information on those pages. So it felt that in these cases, social media, because of its immediacy and its transient nature, was a better way to provide ongoing updates of information that was changing with any degree of frequency instead of updating those you know, kind of more permanent websites. Um, they also noted that emails are still being used for important reminders in the library. Uh, we also had some anecdotal evidence from the focus groups and the surveys uh, talking about Twitter as a customer service tool in particular. And the Twitter party was a really good place for feedback on this as well. And we heard some very specific examples of how librarians are using the channel in a customer service capacity from you know, simple information broadcasting to more detailed feedback. And you'll see some of these quotes from the, the Twitter party on the screen uh, where one person said, students communicate complaints, but also what they find useful. The real-time real feedback is invaluable. And uh, I think the one on the top left is you know, really key to what people are using social media for, using Twitter for, rather. And students use it to tell us if they're too hot, there's noise in the quiet area, and if they're in a long queue. So then people, you know, the library is getting that immediate feedback and can, you know, go address any noise that's, that's going on or, you know, change the thermostat if they have to turn the heat down, things like that. So now some top tips on customer service and how you can use social media as a customer service tool. Um, it can really be used from, you know, gathering feedback and data from um, your, your, uh, your faculty and your students. And in looking at the, uh, the feedback that we gathered, we could draw some key takeaway points that you can apply to uh, social media channels as a customer service tool. So first, a quick response to a customer service query is essential. If users feel they will not get the response they need, they'll move, move on quickly and they'll move away from that social media and they'll use other means to voice their views or they won't bother to provide any feedback whatsoever. Uh, while I, we understand that an immediate response is generally unrealistic, we would suggest aiming for a minimum response time that will help ensure that the users continue to provide that feedback and to return to that social media channel in the future. Uh, making the most of staff time is also key. If it's possible, assign a role to a different individual within the library so that monitoring the channel for responses doesn't fall to one individual. And be the one to start the conversation so that users know they can voice their opinions through the channel. Ask questions which you know, would welcome feedback and arrange for regular postings about key information, such as ongoing times, general building information, things like that. And include an invitation for feedback on promotional materials that are produced for social media. So that's really, really one of the keys. Start the conversation and ask for feedback. Next, we found that driving user engagement is another key reason for using social media in the library. And we found that over time, you know, our survey respondents uh, felt that social media can help to create a central community within their university, within their library, that are strongly linked and have an influential voice. And this idea of listening to the user base can be kind of a passive process by reading and responding to the people who've engaged with your channel, or it really can be an active one where librarians are actively polling their users, as is the case in the next example. So this is a case study that we were able to pull from our uh, focus group. And one institution in the UK focus group was using this polling software from a company called Go Soapbox to encourage interaction with students. So in this situation, all input was welcomed, whether it be ideas, suggestions for change, or complaints. Um, once those were posted, other users could then vote for their favorite idea so that the most popular suggestions would become the most visible on that site with the student's name against it. The most pop popular ideas are then put forward each month to the senior managers in the library, who then review and decide which resulting action to take. A senior manager will also provide a commentary on why the decision has been made, 
you know, to select a certain idea. And that was done so that users are given a rationale behind that, that decision-making process. The uh, library in this case found that the feedback they sourced through this Go Soapbox was really invaluable. They particularly welcomed student complaints as it enabled the institution to move forward and to improve. And the system w was found to provide a real sense of empowerment to students. And they always knew that they would receive quick, a quick response to their suggestion. And this enabled people across the whole university to work together to solve different problems. So what are some key tips for using social media to drive engagement? For one, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, use imagery to communicate ideas. As I said, we're able to process images up to 600 times faster than we can text. And this preference is you know, likely reflective of the growing use of visual, channel, visual channels and the changing way in which users search for information. An image can be used to convey a message far more effectively than text, and it will grab the attention of the user base with more immediacy. In our telephone interviews, for example, several librarians shared their experiences of using visual social media channels, such as Instagram, to share images and to inspire engagement with users. One U.S. library posted pictures of library, library buildings, along with corresponding interesting facts, and they found that students were highly receptive to this, being motivated to comment on the original post and to then go on and share you know, that post with their own pictures. And in turn, the library found that the number of likes to their channel dramatically increased after doing something like that. Uh, we'd also suggest engaging with users on topics that matter to them. One librarian commented on how they like to look out for events which were important to their students, such as exam week, and then enter that conversation to offer their support. And this type of you know, initiative adds more human element to the social media channel, and it demonstrates an op open and receptive approach. We also would suggest that you know, variety is key when it comes to keeping users interested. We would suggest maintain it, maintaining a mix of more, inform more informative messages as well as informal observations, opinion pieces, or questions. As an example, one U.S. library posted a daily diary of one of their first alumni from 1873, and that received a good amount of attention. So it's something a little bit lighter and more kind of informal. Next, we also found that social media is regular, regularly used to promote collections, particularly core databases, but current activities are diverse and ad hoc and there aren't too many formal processes around this just yet. From the results of the survey, Jill and Francis under, that we undertook, uh, promoting the library's collection was within the top three objectives for social media. A key challenge, however, was found to be the niche interest of our library users, which made it difficult to serve up tailored communications. And one suggestion was to work more closely with subject experts in using social media to engage with users with relevant content. Social media was also recognized as having the potential to encourage dialogue with users, providing opportunities for collection development. Listening was felt to be as important as broadcasting as well. And social media was frequently cited as a powerful collection management tool, both for hosting resources and for transforming the digital cataloging. And next we'll look at another case study. Uh, one of the librarians interviewed via telephone detailed how YouTube was a valuable collection management tool for the University of British Columbia. The library there uses webcasting services as a way to deliver broadcasts through the internet. These broadcasts are delivered via YouTube so that end users are able to easily view content from the comfort of their own desktops. So the University of British Columbia felt that YouTube was unparalleled in its accessibility for end users and in the appeal that social media, that social media channel has. Strengths of using YouTube include the length of time users spend on the channel, the use of the channel by a large non-US audience, and the ease of use via a mobile device. The institution went as far as to replace their existing collection management tool, which was ContentDM, and they replaced that with YouTube because of the improved accessibility. It also enabled them to move from a more rigid taxonomy to a folksonomy, which is more you know, a system of classification derived from categorizing tagging and annotation from external user groups, not just from the internal user. Next, some uh, tips for collection promotion through social media. Uh, it was really apparent through the feedback that we got from our focus groups that approaches to collection development and manages, uh, collection develop, development and management are ad hoc and there aren't any you know, kind of hard and fast rules as to how to do it. And also we found that many felt that social media channels were 
you know, more restricted to promotional activity only. So our advice in this regard would be to play to each channel's strengths and to try to integrate your approach. Choose which channel to use as a promotional tool, then link that to resources held elsewhere as necessary, whether that be to a library website repository, an online video a database, or any other site. We would suggest that you create a more structured approach so that the collection development becomes a more regular part of your social media plan and isn't just kind of a one-off option that you're throwing in there. Some libraries cited regular initiatives such as Information Literacy Friday as a way to do that. Um, and then regular posts would be made about an aspect of the library's collection. Quirky posts, such as focusing on a human interest element to a collection, might also create more of a buzz and encourage users to comment or to repost to their friends and followers. So that's something else we would suggest. And as an example, a UK library posted pictures of an old phrenology map to represent content they held in their history of psychiatry section, and that reported positive results um, and lots of engagement from that user group. Um, now promoting social media channels. Our focus group and uh, individual interviews explored how librarians are promoting the social media channels that they've set up. And these quotes here on this screen represent some of the feedback we received. You see the one says, creating more of a community and going out there and really meeting the students and the faculty has really changed how they view the library and it's been a great experience. And also, this is the biggest technology which can bring our people back to the library if they cannot come physically. At least you can, really, you can reach electronically, you can reach out to them by different ways and different means. So there's widespread recognition that it takes significant effort, time, and resources to ensure that your social media channels are being well used. And perhaps reflecting this, the most interesting finding, finding was that nearly a third did no promotion of their sites at all. This is perhaps indicative of the nature of social media, that the experience was that users managed to find accounts which held interest for them with no promotion being carried out whatsoever. For those who are promoting their channels, the most popular avenue is through library websites. They'll be posting different links on the, the website to their social media channels. Uh, posters and Google, Google groups are also popular along with posts to listserv. Some librarians had also noted that they promoted their channels through QR codes, which were then posted around the library building, but they found that these really didn't have very much usage. And promoting social media channels by online methods really seems to be the most popular and possibly um, due to budget constraints and just being a bit easier than trying to print things and post it around the library. Uh, where a budget does allow for print materials, however, Typical promotion included postcards and posters, like those QR codes I just mentioned. So some tips for promoting your social media channel. Uh, make sure you're capitalizing on any audience you already have. Clearly link between your different social media channels to make sure it's easy for those existing users to find you on all of the channels that you're using and that you have a presence in. Uh, we also suggest make the most of any free promotional opportunities. Include a link in email signatures. Make sure there are clear links from the library website to the different social media channels, and post messages on key listservs for free. Word of mouth is extremely valuable as well, and we suggest getting all members of the library team on board with the promotion by using the networks that they're part of, and just you know telling students about it as they come into the library, things like that. And make your budget go as far as you can. Are there existing print materials you could borrow space on to promote your channels? You know, due date slips, library information leaflets. If there's anything like that being sent out, try to add a note about the Facebook page, Twitter, things like that. Um, also emails if you're sending out any kind of email campaigns to, to faculty and students. That's always good to include that there as well. Now I'm going to talk about policy and managing policies within the, uh, the library. And I'm going to run a quick poll. And it would be great if everyone could respond to that. Um, so moving on to the you know, management and the policy behind social media in the library, we asked the librarians to share their experiences of how they went about managing the output of their social media channels and whether they had any metrics in place for measuring the impact of their different posts and you know, the use of social media. And interestingly enough, only a small minority of libraries, libraries are scheduling their posts in advance, with a majority of 75% saying that they, uh, they approach the output of their channels on a more ad hoc basis and just kind of as things come up. Of those who do manage the output of their accounts using online tools, 
There are a range of sites that are currently being used. And these social media management tools can be you know, really helpful when managing many different social media sites or multiple accounts on the same channel. And it could cut down on you know, the different time spent planning posts. Hootsuite, for example, we have used by the majority of respondents with 44% choosing to plan posts in advance using this service. And when you're using Hootsuite, you can schedule the, uh, the post to be sent out on a certain date, certain time, and you can have the same post um, put up on all your different social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, everything like that at the same time. Uh, however, as can be seen here, there are many other tools like TweetDeck and Feedly that were also represented in the responses that we received. And this indicates perhaps that social media account management is still you know, relatively early in experimental stage. So we also found in our research that measurement of impact is also generally ad hoc, but some institutions were beginning to analyze the results more closely. The experimental nature of communications and the relative newness of the channels really are making benchmarking a bit difficult at this stage. And in our in-depth phone interviews, one librarian describes how she championed measuring social media within her library, a bit of a case study. Um, so previously, she tracked social media engagement on the different accounts she controlled, and she would share those metrics with the other accounts. With that information that she was gathering, she was able to present to the library executive, and this was August 2013, during their audit, and she persuaded the library executive of the importance of reflecting on the results of social media because so much staff and student time was being spent to use it. Some of her colleagues were questioning the value of measuring the social media, uh, but the library executive is now convinced of its importance. And in March 2014, she launched a metrics campaign as well as training for her staff so that they could do and have a more formal kind of engagement and look at those metrics on a regular basis. And I see now that some people can't see the slides. Can you see them now? Give me one second. Does that work? Okay, give us one second. Sorry about this, everyone. Is that any better? Okay, great. Perfect. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. Now, where was I? Measuring impact, right? Uh, yes, I just did the case study. Uh, and in this situation, some of the colleagues uh, this woman had thought that they could measure engagement by the number of links, uh, likes and followers on social media. But this librarian, librarian in particular emphasized that focusing just on the click-through data also um, you know, encourages others to do so as well. And favorites tracking on Facebook and Twitter are another way that she does uh, measure engagement. So some top tips for promotion, or for policy and management, rather. Uh, we would suggest implementing a basic social media policy. Comments from the focus group suggest that while it's worthwhile to implement some form of policy in order to maintain you know, the appropriate engaging output for social networks, this should be simple and easy to follow. Uh, they specifically said that introducing a complicated style guide and rules might be confusing to members of staff. And it can also stifle creativity, which is, you know, in some cases, kind of half the point of social media. Uh, they also suggested putting measures in place to ensure that your social media channels stay on track 
you know, with your, your different objectives that you're, you're trying to follow within the library, but also encourage staff to bring their own ideas and suggestions to those social media channels. We would also suggest that, you know, while tracking results can be a bit time consuming, it'll also prevent you from being in the situation of running a social media channel where no one's using it. So if you do have to kind of back up your reason for, for having a social media site, that can be a really good way to do it. And it can help you make decisions about whether or not to continue the site or to help you try to find ways to, you know, increase usage and increase likes and followers and things like that. We also suggest that you make sure you correlate your results with real-time data at the launch of key promotions. You know, did a series of posts about a comp competition in your library result in a significant increase in commentary, as well as likes on your social media page, or was this not very well picked up on? This type of information will really help you evaluate the types of posts, and it'll help inform your, your future social media activity and what you're going to be doing later on. Also use the information you're recording. For instance, if there are certain topics that are more popular than others, you know, look at those and continue to do stuff with those, those topics. Maybe the timing of posts will influence their success. Maybe you're finding that you get more likes and, you know, more traffic to a site if you're posting in the morning. Then keep doing that and don't do so much in the afternoon if you're not getting a lot done. And just, you know, incorporate all of these observations into your ongoing social media plan. And then finally, as part of the best practice guidelines um, we'll be distributing over the coming months, we're going to focus on measuring and managing the social media accounts. So included in some of this research that we're going to be doing in this follow-up, uh, there will be a tracking tool that you can use to measure the effectiveness of your social media channel. So if you keep following us on Twitter, our, hash, or our Twitter feed is at Library Lantern. You can find out when this tool is going to be available. Now, the future of social media. If only we had a crystal ball. Uh, many of our librarians were particularly interested in the future of social media. And as you can see from the answers to the two questions on this slide, um, the majority of librarians see social media as having an important role in the library going forward. And they really expect to see dedicated social media roles appear within the library. Um, and how and what that future might look like was harder for some to articulate. But the next slide will give us kind of an idea of how librarians feel social media is going to evolve. So the opinions that we found you know, among the people that we surveyed and spoke to and had Twitter parties with um, you know, as to where social media is going to go in the future are really pretty different. Some of the ideas that librarians suggested included you know, a need for the library to be more strategic, uh, integrating social media more closely with their other existing systems and with the university itself, while others felt that social media is more transient and uh, it'll be a little bit different, and it's not something that everybody has to use or take advantage of. But overall, many do feel that social media will start to form an increasingly central part of a librarian's role and become an everyday part of the communication with end users, no matter how they may feel about it. So that's where I'm going to leave things today. Um, I do hope you'll go and browse the white paper for yourself as today's presentation really represents just kind of a small sample of the information that we we were able to pull, and that's included in that white paper. Um, and we see this as just kind of being a start to the conversation, and we plan to build a more kind of central based, central web-based resource on social media for the library community to, you know, provide different updates, more key studies that we gathered, and other best practice guides. And we hope that some of these tools that we're going to be creating over the next couple months are going to be, you know, something that's really valuable to the library community and it'll help librarians develop different resources that they can benefit from and that they can use to really, you know, start their own social media plans within their institutions. And if you have any comments or questions or experiences with social media that you'd like to share, you know, I'd love to hear more from you. Please visit us at the uh, TNF booth at ALA Midwinter if you're going to be there in Chicago. Um, or you can contact me through email or through our Twitter feed. And with that, I'll leave it to uh, any questions. And I'll give you a second just in case you have any questions for Stacy.
I want to thank Stacy Seek for her presentation, and I want to thank all of you for attending this webinar. I also want to thank Mary Reeder for providing technical support and recording it, and I appreciate you all sticking with us through our technical difficulties. I hope you will look for future ELECT programs on the website listed above. Please fill out the evaluation when you will receive it and help us develop more programs that you are interested in. Again, thank you for coming.